What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back inside the UC Health Training Center for another episode of Broncos Now. Team reporter and host Sydney Jones here. And coming up on today's episode, head coach Nathaniel Hackett will give the final injury report ahead of the Broncos Week 14 matchup versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Plus, Broncos lead writer Eric Delala joins the show for a game preview. All that and more coming up. Broncos are set to face the Kansas City Chiefs here at Empower Field at Mile High on Sunday. We heard from head coach Nathaniel Hackett today for the final time ahead of this weekend's matchup. And he talked about the rivalry between the Broncos and the Chiefs dating back to when his dad coached in Kansas City. We, we had a little presentation today about one, one of the games that was pretty impressive that had a lot of uh, unique situational things happen during it, uh, just to show that uh, this game is going to be, you know, it's a battle. It's, so many different things can happen, and it's who can keep composed, who can continue to battle. I mean, that's how it's been our whole <laughs> the whole season, and uh, we got to be able to finish the game. Coach Hackett also spoke on the Chiefs' run game and the weapons they have on offense outside of Patrick Mahomes. I mean, obviously they pass the ball a ton. I mean, that's that's what they're great at. The thing I'd say about their run game is it's it's very good when they do decide to run. I mean, they're very efficient. They take advantage of uh, a light box if people are trying to defend the pass. So uh, they know when to pick and choose their spots, and when they are, they're very efficient. And so it's going to be a great challenge because they can get you with a lot of different things. Plus, cornerback K1 Williams was not listed on today's injury report. So Coach I could discuss what it will mean to have him back this Sunday. He's he's a very smart football player, so he has the ability to to play a little bit man, play zone, understand the route combinations, talking with all those guys, and uh, I I just think how that whole back end meshes, especially when he's in there, is, is really something special, and they just got to keep grinding with that. Now it's time to look at today's injury report ahead of Sunday's game. Coach Jacket ruled out linebacker Dakota Allen, fullback and tight end Andrew Beck, and wide receiver Cortland Sutton. And inside linebacker Justin Sternod, defensive tackle DJ Jones, and guard Dalton Reisner were all listed as questionable. Now joining me here inside the Broncos podcast studio for a game preview is Broncos lead writer Eric Delala. Eric, appreciate you joining me here on this Friday. It's nice to be back at home this weekend after two games on the road. Yeah, no kidding. No travel this weekend. It's nice. We'll be back at empower field at mile high have a little fan support it'll be a, a nice change it will be for sure well eric we just took a look at the final injury report you know we saw a lot of guys hit that report this week a lot of guys didn't practice dj jones dalton reisner two guys specifically they were listed as questionable i know Cortland sutton he is out we heard that a little bit earlier in the week from coach hackett what are your concerns this week with some of those guys going into the game yeah we'll have to see i mean obviously a good sign that uh dj and dalton were able to practice today I think that shows that you're moving in the right direction. Um, obviously, against the Chiefs, the more defensive uh, players you have, high-caliber defensive players, the better. Mm -hmm. um, they're no joke in their run game now. Um, got a good young back. And so yeah. you've got to be able to stop the run. Obviously, DJ Jones has been a consistent run stopper in there. I don't think he's missed a game all season. So uh, hopefully he's able to go. And then Dalton... You heard Nathaniel Hackett say earlier in the week, Sydney, that he's kind of been their rock on offense. He's been the guy in there, yeah. hasn't missed a lot of time. Um, they're obviously better with him in there. It would be cool, I think, after the Walter Payton news was announced this week for him to be able to go out there and play. So I'm sure both of those guys will push to play. When you look at the receiver position, no Cortland Sutton, um, it'll be interesting to see. I think having Jerry Judy in there, who's not listed as questionable, which means he's ready to go, that's a good sign. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's because teams are giving Cortland more attention or what it might be, but he hasn't had quite the production over the last stretch of games that you would you would hope for. And so, um, you know, I, I don't obviously it's a loss to not have him out there, but I am interested to see, you know, what what is Jerry able to do? Um, obviously, he was a he made a big impact against the Ravens, just 20 snaps, I think four catches. Um, so to have him there is, is a really good sign. And I'd be a lot more concerned if Jerry we're not out there. So hopefully the Broncos have the weapons, still have Greg Dulcich, have Jerry Judy um, to get something done because you're going to need to score points. For sure. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of young guys on this offense right now just with the numerous injuries that, you know, this team has suffered. So who's one of maybe one of the younger guys that you really want to see step up this week on offense? On offense? I mean, I think you just need those young receivers to keep doing their thing. Um, I think a Brandon Johnson, a Kendall Hinton, I know that Kendall is not – as young as those guys, yeah. but still really his, just his second full season mm -hmm. playing receiver. And last year wasn't even a full season. So 
Um, see him get better and better. He's made some big time plays out there. I think you can argue he's been as valuable as any guy on offense, just in terms of his willingness to play at different positions. He obviously made that big catch earlier in the season against the Niners. That was kind of the one of the few highlights of the year. It was good in Tennessee. So you need Kendall to continue playing well. And so who would have thought, you know, a couple of years ago when he was the emergency quarterback and, and no one had ever heard of him, that he'd be essentially wide receiver two for you going into a game against the Kansas City Chiefs. It's great for yeah. Kendall. It's great for him. I'm, I'm really happy for him. Nobody works harder. Sure. Um, but it, it just kind of speaks to how crazy, crazy things are right now. Yeah. Well, Eric, we all know how good Patrick Mahomes is. You know, Coach yep. Hackett said earlier this week that he's looking to be this year's MVP just with the way he's been playing this season. So what do you think is the key for this defense to, you know, just try and slow him down? Yeah. Well, one, it's, it's partially on the offense. You got to keep the ball away from him. You've got to have these long drives. You've got to, you know, be efficient. I think is the biggest thing you've got to be able to score when you're in the red zone. Um, because if you just give him chance after chance after chance, he's going to score points at some point. Right. Um, and we've seen that the last few years. He struggled a little bit against this Denver defense, this Vic Fangio style defense that the Broncos still run here. Um, but he's still going to score around 20 points. And even if you hold him down for a while, he's going to have that drive. So it is partially on the offense. But defensively, you know, can you keep him in the pocket? Can you get pressure? Can you frustrate him? A little bit. I mean, the Broncos have had success. I think last year, I believe it was in Kansas City. He didn't throw a touchdown. He threw for fewer than 200 yards, had the interception. Right. And then obviously last year at home, the Broncos were in position to win that game until Melvin Gordon lost that fumble there. Yeah. Um, so I think this defense has the potential to uh, to frustrate Mahomes, but you've got to execute. And I, I think having K1 Williams back yeah. will be a big part of that. Everyone looks at Pat Sertan, Justin Simmons, but I think some of the struggles in the secondary as of late, are partially explained by the fact that K1 hasn't been out there and he can just do so many things. To me, he's the glue of that defense. And so having him back out there, it seems like he's good to go. That's going to be a big deal for the Broncos. Yeah. And it'll be, you know, I know Coach Hackett said earlier in the week that they're not sure what they're going to do with Travis yeah. Kelsey yet. They might mix it up, maybe have Pat or K1 Williams covering him. What will it mean, first off, to have K1 back for a situation, a guy like Travis Kelsey and how do you think the Broncos will look to contain him this weekend? Yeah, I mean, K1's a big physical guy. Yeah. Um, and I think when Bryce Callahan left last mm -hmm. year, I was kind of like, well, he's a really good slot player. They're going to miss him. And, and, you know, no disrespect to Bryce Callahan, who's Bryce Callahan, who's been really good in L.A., but mm -hmm. K1's been every bit as good, if not better, physical in the run game, yeah. can guard tight ends, can guard slot receivers. You know, you think back earlier in the year when this defense was playing at its height mm -hmm. and some of these big plays where Bryce Callahan, or excuse me, geez, now, I get, now I'm thinking <laughs> about last year, right. where Kwan Williams uh, breaking up a pass in the middle of the defense, um, mm -hmm. making that big time play in that big time moment that the Broncos have lacked at times. So I think he can uh, can be a piece that you use against Travis Kelsey, but you hit it there, Cindy. It can't just be one thing. It can't just be Kwan Williams. It can't just be Pat Sertan. Um, the Broncos are going to play zone at some point, I'm sure. They're going to play man at some point. You've got to be able to mix things up against this Chiefs, Chiefs offense because they've got too many weapons, and Travis Kelsey's too smart a player. Patrick Mahomes is too smart a player. Sure. Andy Reid is too smart a play caller um, to be fooled by one thing, and so you've got to consistently throw different things at them and hope that you're able to slow them down. Eric, right, as we talked about all week, we know the Broncos have lost 13 straight to the Chiefs, so looking at this game – at this team as a whole, what would it really mean for these guys in this locker room to get the win on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think that I kind of have dueling thoughts here. Mm -hmm. One is that obviously always great to beat a rival, and you, you sure. want to have that feeling. These guys have not had that feeling in the locker room much at all this year. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, re-energizing, it's exhilarating, it's all those things. And so, and to get that against the Chiefs who have had your number, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. I think it proves to them that they can beat the Chiefs, you know, going into next year, when you're hopefully more competitive in the division and, you know, in the regular season as a whole, you don't just hope that you can beat the chiefs. You know that you, you can beat you. them if you knock them off this week. But point. on the other hand, I, it also to me, Cindy, it can't just be about this week because if you win this weekend, which would be a great effort, but then you go out and you lose the next week, then it, how much does that really matter? I mean, to me, what separates the good teams in this league from the teams that struggle is the ability to be consistent. And we've seen the Broncos consistently be in games. Yeah. They haven't consistently won games. And so, uh, you know, you've got to start with the Chiefs. Obviously, it would be a huge win. But then to me, it's also, it can't just stop there. It's got to be about being consistent and performing well at a high level 
all the time. And when you get to that, then you can consider yourself a real challenger to the Chiefs. So view it as a, you know, if you get a win, great win, um, something to build on. But I'm not quite ready to say, okay, well, now the Broncos can challenge the Chiefs in the division because you've got to show it over an extended period of time. For sure. You mentioned, you know, the Broncos being in just about every game this yep. season. What do you think? I don't know if you have the answer to this, Eric, but what do you think is really the key to trying to close out these games, finish these games, and get the win? Yeah, I mean, one thing that stands out to me is put teams away when you can. And that yeah. might not necessarily apply this weekend because I do think against the Chiefs, it's going to be a close game if you're in it. You know, if you have a chance to win, you're probably going to have to execute in the final moments. So For sure. in that case, do your job. Um, you know, Russell Wilson, can he make a play like he did against the Niners, like he did against the Texans, like he did against the Jaguars? You might need that again, but I just think in general, Sydney, they've had chances. I mean, I looked this up earlier this week. There's been a lot of situations where the Broncos have had the lead this year, and then the defense gets a stop, and they've got a chance to add to that lead. Mm. I think 37 drives, something like that. Yeah, wow. um, the Broncos have kicked seven field goals and scored one touchdown in those opportunities. So that they haven't taken advantage of yeah. the chance to to extend the lead, the put lead. teams away. And listen, if you are playing well in the first half and you score a touchdown or two and you're leading the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, right. you don't want to just keep them within a field goal <laughs> yeah. because more than anybody, they'll come back and they'll bite you at the end. So sure. um, put some distance between you if you can. Take advantage of your opportunities and then, you know, come up big in those final moments. Like you said, it's it's easier said than done. For sure. Yeah. Well, hopefully the Broncos can do that this weekend. Eric, appreciate your time and your insight always. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now, Broncos Country. Thanks so much for tuning in today and every day. Hope to see you all this weekend at Empower Field at Mile High this Sunday. Don't forget, kickoff is at 2.05 p.m. Mountain Time. But if not, I will meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube Monday following the game. See you all then.